Now we would like to look at some of the chemically important subgroups of the group C4V. Here we see our reference C4V structure, uh, square pyramidal. So now what we'd like to do is make some substitutions to the atoms, particularly at the base, and see to which new point groups uh, we arrive. So here's one of the first substitution patterns. We can have di substituted along the base, and we see that we have trans substitution. So we have two red atoms trans and two blue atoms trans. Well, we can see right away that if we attempt to do a C4 rotation using this particular model, if we do a C4, we've brought red into blue. So it is not invariant. It is different than it was before. So therefore, C4 is no longer an operation of the group. So what we want to find now is what is the high order rotation axis for this particular molecule? Well, particularly if we rearrange our molecule slightly in this direction, it might even be easier to see that we do have a C2 operation. So let's see, we can rotate by 180 degrees and we see that if we do that, the atoms all line up. Therefore, C2 is an operation of the group of the symmetries of this particular molecule. By the same token, if we go in the clockwise direction, we see that C2 minus 1 is also an operation of the group. So the high order rotation axis for this particular substitution pattern is C2. And it turns out that this belongs to the group C2V. The high order rotation axis comes through here, from the peak through the base. We have two mirror planes. One mirror plane goes along here, and a second vertical mirror goes along this direction. This can be confusing for students because if they ignore the atom at the peak and only look at the atoms at the base, they might surmise that this is the point group D2H, which it would be if this molecule were planar, but it's not. We have an atom at the top here and there is not an equivalent atom on the other side. So that is an important uh, feature to keep in mind when assigning the point group symmetries for a molecule of this type. So this is C2V. Now if we try sort of a cis substituted pattern, so here we have on the left side we have two blue atoms and on the right side we have two red atoms. So we would like to see in this case what is the high order rotation axis as a first step in determining the point group. And again, if we try to make a uh, rotation here, what we see happens is if we try to do a C4, we see that certainly none of the atoms line up, so that C4 is not the high order rotation axis anymore. So let's see, well maybe we have a C2. Well if we try to do C2, we rotate in this direction, we see that the atoms do not line up, so there is not a C2 rotational axis here. It turns out for this particular substitution pattern, let's put it back the way it was, the high order rotation axis is only a C1. Only a C1. So we have to look for any other symmetry operations that would be available other than the identity. If we turn our molecule more suggestively in this particular arrangement, we can see that there is a mirror plane that goes through this way from top to bottom, which mirrors this blue to that blue, this red to that red. So since it only has two symmetry operations, the identity and a mirror, this 
particular arrangement belongs to the point group CS. That's CS. Here we have another substitution pattern. Now we have three different substituents. There's two of the red, one of the blue, and one of the yellow. And again, we would like to sign the point group symmetries. We won't show it, but you can convince yourself that if you do a C4 rotation, the atoms do not line up. Therefore, C4 is no longer an operation of this group for this molecule. We might suspect that there might be a C2. So let's take a look at that. Again, we might line our molecule up this way for easy reference. And let's do a 180 degree turn. So once we do a 180 degree turn, we notice that two of the atoms indeed line up, but two of the atoms don't line up. Unless all the atoms line up, it doesn't count as a symmetry operation. Therefore, there is no C2 rotation for this particular molecule. So let's return it to its original state. And again, we want to see which particular symmetry operations might still be present. If we rotate it for our convenience in this particular direction, it might be easier to see that it does have a mirror plane. The mirror plane goes along this way. It mirrors red to red, blue into itself, black into itself, and yellow into itself. So here we see another example of having reduced the symmetry of the square pyramid from C4V down to CS. Here is yet another tri-substituted version of the square pyramid. It has no C4. It has no C2. And in fact, it does not even have a mirror plane. Therefore, we have reduced the symmetry all the way down that it only has one remaining symmetry operation, which is the identity. So this particular molecule belongs to the point group C1. Last, but hardly least, we decided to have four different substituents along the base. And we would like to see if the, uh, what the point group is going to be in this particular case. Again, you can convince yourself that if you try C4 or C2 rotations, that the atoms will not line up completely. Therefore, C4 and C2 are not symmetry operations of the group. We can look for mirrors. There aren't any. So again, this is another instance of having reduced the symmetry down to C1. As we conclude this episode, remember that the Nile is not just a river in Egypt. It is a river in Sudan also. This brings us to the end of episode 9. Have a good one.